All oh, right then gang, so we've looked at classes so far to create these different objects. But earlier in the course I mentioned that ES6 classes were actually just a bit of syntactic sugar built on top of the JavaScript prototype model. So JavaScript as a language doesn't really have classes. The stuff we've been writing here has so far basically been pretend classes built into the language as a way to emulate how classes behave. But classes are just a thin layer of abstraction built on top of the JavaScript prototype model. Now the JavaScript prototype model was the original way we tend to create or emulate classes in JavaScript before we had this class keyword. And when we now create a class using the new ES6 class keyword, JavaScript is still working the same way as it did before to emulate these classes using the prototype model under the hood. Now you might be scratching your head thinking, why am I telling you all this? And why do I even need to know now that we just have this class keyword? Can I not just use that instead of worrying about the prototype model and what's going on under the hood? And well, yeah, if you don't feel a need to understand the inner workings or want to be a more complete JavaScript developer, that's fine. You don't need to learn it. But by learning the prototype model, you'll have more flexibility when it comes to working with objects, debugging code, or even working with other developers code who may have used the prototype model, because you can't be sure that everyone wants to use classes, right? So that's why I want to teach it to you. I do think it's important to learn. So there you go. Now you know that classes are just syntactic sugar. And before they were introduced, we had to emulate classes a different way, which is what I'm gonna show you right now. So let's just think for a minute. When we create a class using this class keyword right here, what is it that's actually responsible for making up that object when we want to create one based on that class? Well, it's a combination of things really, but mainly it's the constructor function right here. That is the thing that binds all of the properties and values to the object when we create it right here, all right? So even though we're not gonna be using the class keyword now to emulate a class, we'll still need some kind of constructor function to construct the objects, okay? So first of all, let's get rid of all of this junk. We don't need this anymore because we won't be using classes. Now I'm gonna keep var user one and user two. We'll still use those later on, but the rest of this stuff I will delete. Okay then, so we need to create this constructor function. So it's just a normal function and we'll call it user with a capital U like so. Now before, the class that we created was called user with a capital U. Now it's the constructor function that's called user with a capital U because we're not using the class keyword anymore. So this constructor function right here now represents our user class. It creates user objects. Now when we want to create a new user object, we can still create that in the same way using this new keyword. Down here we don't need to change that one bit because remember, when we use classes, the class keyword, JavaScript is still doing all of the same stuff behind the scenes. So this new keyword right here, this is still doing all the same kind of stuff it would be doing for the class under the hood, all right? So again, what that new keyword is doing is creating, first of all, an empty object for us. Then it's binding the context of this equal to that object, that empty object, and it's passing it into this constructor function right here. So then we have access to this as the empty object inside this constructor function. So again, what we could do is take those parameters inside this constructor function, email and name, and we're passing those in right here, yeah? And then what we can do is we can add those properties to the, this keyword, to the new object that we've passed into this constructor function. So we can say this.email is gonna be equal to email, the thing that we receive right here. And also this dot name is gonna be equal to name. I'm also gonna give this an online property, this dot online, which says whether the user is online or not. And I'll set that equal to false to begin with. We don't need to pass it in as a parameter because it's always gonna be set to false to begin with when we create a new user. Now, remember in the last videos, we also added methods to our class. So let's just add a method to our constructor function right here. We'll say this.login is gonna be equal to a function like so. And inside this function, what we'll do is say console.log and we'll say this.email has logged in. Okay, all right then. So let's just 
add down here a console log to see if this works and we'll log user one first of all to the console and then we'll say also user two dot login and we'll call that function on user two okay so now i'm going to save this and just head over to the browser to see if this works and we can see now that in the console first we're logging this user right here which has these properties email name online and then we're saying yoshi at mario corp which is user two's email has logged in so this is all working and i can call those from the console as well we can see user 2 is yoshi at mariocorp.com etc okay so this is all working now so if you think about it we're still kind of emulating a user class this way it's just that now we're no longer using the class keyword this is the kind of stuff we do before the class keyword under the hood right now then this is fine but generally when we want to attach methods to an emulated class like this, we don't put those methods inside the constructor function. Instead, we use the prototype property on this constructor function, and we'll see exactly what that looks like in the next video.